Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. But yeah, man, uh, let's get straight off into it, man. Uh, I've been watching a lot of like retro stuff this week. Like I started a new series. Uh, uh, I kind of went back and started watching some of the old stuff I used to watch on TV. And I wanted to kind of talk to y'all and see what y'all three best TV shows of all time were. Um, web series can count. So if it's like something that's a web series, but like TV based or something like that, that counts. Um, and why um, now best should be based off of critical acclaim ratings show longevity cultural impact your own personal reasoning but just be prepared to kind of explain the rationale behind your picks and possibly kind of defend things um, so mm-hmm. yeah. um, did either one of y'all want to go first or did y'all want to hear my three my top three shows um, you can go first if you want to brother Ooh. All right. So um really 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 good show at number three. And uh, I'm going, you know, worse to the best, I guess. Um at number three, top shows of all times. I gotta put, and I know it might be controversial to some, but I gotta put the Cosby show. Um, I think it is one of the number most three. versatile shows ever. Um, as far as the amount of different types of people that it can appeal to and relate to, um, it it is one of the longest running shows ever. Um, it also spawned off another highly successful spinoff based off of its own success. Um, it was funny, critic, critically acclaimed, is wildly held as one of the top sitcoms of all time on most lists. Um, and regardless of the showrunners um indiscretions over the years the show itself it, it it stands the test of time um it's still funny to this day a lot of the themes they talk about are still relevant to this day and uh it's almost like a time capsule because you can literally see the transition from the 80s to the 90s by watching that show and it's a real cool way to look back at your childhood if you get a chance so cosby show at number three um <clears throat> yeah and number two this new show that i picked was well, it's a very old show now but it's a new show to me because i just started watching it a lot of people talk about it but i i didn't really i had never watched an episode of the shit curb your enthusiasm um it's another uh comedy based show but the type of show it is it's like revolutionary for its time it started kind of the single camera um type of tv shows for america um it's a show that's kind of one of a kind because it's completely improv so like it's literally a a tv show but it's improv so it's like wow because like you never know exactly what each person is going to say um it is one of the again one of the longer running shows and you know critics love the show um, I think the cultural impact of that show, you can be you can see it in shows like Community, uh, Parks and Rec, the American version of The Office, uh, like uh, Blackish. Uh, you can see pieces of it in uh, shows like. Um, damn, I can't think of it. Or, uh, what's the damn, damn, damn. It has some Asians. It was like off the boat or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, fresh uh, off. Uh, fresh off the family boat. Even. Yeah. You can see the the lineage of curb your enthusiasm in those shows um but yeah it's a hilarious fucking show and every episode is like a whole new thing so it's not one of them shows where if you miss them you really be that off like you can watch one episode and enjoy it just as much as binge watch um but yeah so that's number two on my list and then number one the number one tv show of all time period to me of any genre and i don't i, I don't care what you like Breaking Bad. Um, Not one of the most longest running, but I think it's because they tied it up neatly to where Uh it didn't have to go anymore. Um, 
one of the best shows from a dramatic acting standpoint. Brian Cranston is amazing. Um, Giancarlo Esposito is amazing. Um, like the entire show is full of actors giving their best fucking performances. Um, the premise of the show was very original for its time. Uh, you know, school teacher becomes drug kingpin, and the reasoning behind it it was one of the it was one of the coolest shows. Um, especially in the I guess mid two thousand, it kind of started the role of the anti hero being cool in TV shows, where it's like mm-hmm. you're not necessarily a good guy, but you root for him. Um, yeah, and you could definitely see yourself in a lot of his decisions. Um, it has a spinoff show that was successful as well. That was also good. Uh, Better Call Saul. Um, and it is literally just one of those shows that like once you watch the first episode or two. I dare you to want to wanna stop watching it. It's like once you get through the first episode or two, you're hooked. And every episode, you never stop being hooked for the rest of the run of the series. Like, it's one of those shows that you will sit there and binge all five seasons right then and there just because you, you're like, all right, I just want to know, okay, what, 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 what? The way they tie together themes, the names of the episodes, the colors in the shows, the way they use foreshadowing, the way it's shot, the cinematography of the actual show. Like, it's just, it is the, when you talk about what it takes to make a successful TV show, it checks every single box. It, it is it. it. It it literally kind of held A and E on his back for a second and was like, "I got y'all." And yeah, so uh, Breaking Bad number one for me. What say you? <clears throat> no, uh, I really don't have an order for mine, but I'll give mine as far as how I like them. Um. Now, coming first to mind when you brought this conversation, I had a whole bunch of different series. And even when we talk about it now, I still got different series coming to mind. So my list might change up in my mind when I'm giving them out, but I know my core one that I want to give out. And we got to give them three. So my last one may be hard for me to distinguish between. Um, so the first one I'm going to give out is the, um, the Office, the U.S. version. Um, mm-hmm. Got to love that. I mean, like, from start to end, like, that show, any age can watch that. I feel like my middle daughter, she loves The Office. You feel me? Hey, that <laughs> you feel she, she not, she's not going to understand all the jokes, That's but there's no cursing on there. There's no cursing on there. She can still laugh at the silliness of office environment, the office environment. You feel me? Like, that show, very long run. I think it had nine seasons. Um, it really it wasn't as funny when Steve Carell left to me, but it still kept up. The show still kept up for a couple more seasons after he left. Um, critically acclaimed, plenty, plenty of episodes. The people from the show have, some people from the show have left to become movie stars and stand out on their own. Um, John, dude with the last name, start with a K, Cran, whatever. Crazy. Can't pronounce it. There you go. Him. Great actor. He's been in um Mar- been in Marvel movies. He was just in um the Multiverse of Madness and mm-hmm. um the what's the name? Dude Stretchy Arms. Uh 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 Ree Richard. Ree Richard. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Got turned got got turned to spaghetti and shit. Yeah. Great actor. Um Steve Carell, the dude with the glasses played the white. He was in a couple of different series after that, a couple of different movies after he came off of the office. Uh the red head from the movie. Mm-hmm. The redhead, uh, Pam, she was in a good movie, good sci-fi movie. So the people from the movie have done some stuff. They, I ain't going to say they mega stars, but they still have good acting careers from that. Um, after that, I'm going to say um, The Cosby Show. Uh, mm-hmm. You've already explained why it is there. So I'm not going to go through another explanation of the same show. Uh, but this last one is really a hard decision for me. So... I'm going to just go ahead and say The Walking Dead. Oh. Um, <clears throat> good good series to me. Um, regardless of where you catch it, you hook. If you catch it on season one or season four, you, you hook into the series. 
Um, you may be inclined to go back and watch because you're so hungry. On, oh, how did they get here? But if you sit there and watch, if you're a, a, a horror fan or a, a, a fan of that genre, you definitely want to watch it. Um, it spawned a couple of different series off of itself. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead. They got two series for, uh, off of that. So it, it's doing good. I think it's going to come to an end. I believe it's got a, what, I believe it's in season nine or ten itself. Um, I believe it wasn't the case. It didn't come off a comic book or something like that, Pat. What, uh, Walking Dead? Yeah. Walking Dead. Yeah. It was uh, so, in, in uh, Image Comics, and then they made it into the movie, uh, made it into the um, TV show, pretty much. And, and they got a video game from it. So, mm -hmm. uh, I really, really, I, I fuck with it. I, I fuck with it. Um, it has a cult following. Um, and I feel like even when it goes off the air, uh, it may, I don't know if it's in a syndication now where they're playing the reruns, but I feel like we'll go into syndication like some of the great TV shows have. Mm -hmm. True, true. Right on. That's pretty solid. All right. Um, this this was kind of hard to pick through because I started thinking about all the shows back in the day and then all the memories start kicking in or whatever. So I have some honorable mentions <laughs> pretty much. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, an open discussion. <clears throat> Ooh, 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 excuse me, excuse me, sorry, Pat. My honorable mm -hmm. mention, my honorable mention is a web, it's a web series called, um, fuck, what is it, Project Heat. Web mm -hmm. series called Project Heat. I was hooked on that shit for years and years and years. From the first episode I watched, I could not get off of Project Heat. I was hooked on, like, because it wouldn't give you, it, I couldn't binge it. It would come out one episode every week. So you had to be waiting every week, like back in the day, like in the 90s, when you had to wait for a new show to come on. So I was hooked off that. It was a hood ass TV show, but the the plot line and the premise behind it was actually good. It wasn't just no raggedy ass regular web web series. No oh, right. I've never heard of it. But yeah, I never heard of never watched Project Heat. Go back and watch Project Heat. It's a nice web series. Oh, yeah. If you like if you like gangster or hood, I should say, storyline, story plots, Project Heat. Okay. okay. Project Heat. So, um, my honorable mentions, um, some of y'all have named, um, pretty much, uh, Cosby Show, Breaking Bad, uh, The Office, Married with Children, mm -hmm. 18, and Sanford and Son. You said the 18? The 18. That's just my personal I favorite. Fuck with. I fuck with the A. Barack. I can watch that show anytime, any anywhere. It, it doesn't matter or whatever. <laughs> Pretty much, that was my show when I was a kid. Like they build weapons out of everything. You give them a toothpick, a toothbrush, <laughs> and a flamethrower, and that motherfucker make a tank. The original Magal. Damn right. Exactly. Exactly. Whatever. I, I picked them over Night Rider and the rest of them any day. But these are my three. Um, my third is in living color. Oh shit! That's 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 a good one. I forgot all about that. That's a mm -hmm. good, damn good. <clears throat> um, my second is Martin. Okay, mm, good one. I could, I could, I could, I could have Martin playing the background, and I could just go away for a second, then come back, and I would just randomly laugh. That's that's like one of them is one of them shows that no one no matter where you like stop at and come back to you're going to have something some funny is going to pop up and it has te it, it it stands the test of time pretty much. It does. Agreed. All right. I don't know. My last one might be breaking rules, but at the same time I feel like somewhere it is it is number 1. The Simpsons. That's not breaking the rules. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was just thinking we weren't talking about animated, but the Simpsons. Hey man, that counts, man. Because I started the longer. I didn't do honorable mentions, but South Park is in my like my top five. 
I was going to say Family Guy probably or something. But, yeah. But, yep. Uh, Living Color, Simpson. Um, Living Color, Martin Simpson. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at no. I'm not mad at that. Simpsons, I, I'm not a big fan, but I respect their cultural relevance and impact. Like, they are, I know what they are, even though I'm not a big fan. Uh, what y'all think about the predict date? They were saying the predict, Simpsons predicted thing. I think that they are ahead of the curve on a lot of uh, thoughts. I think the Simpsons are geniuses when it comes to social, political um, subjects. It, to the mm-hmm. point that they have a formula when it comes to humans and stupid situations. Like, I think they like they had discussions or whatever. You ever had a discussion, like a political discussion with somebody or like a, just a discussion, anything about something serious or like health or whatever. And then you say something like in a couple of years, they probably going to do this and this just off of what you've seen so far. Right, or that <clears throat> trends. Yeah, yeah, like a, uh, like um, if you were a techie back in the day or whatever, and um, you were one of the first people that had internet, and there was only one network, you and you guessed, hey, they're probably gonna make two networks for the modem and the future. The Simpsons are like that when it comes to social political stuff. So I feel like, I feel like. They got like I a feel like, rhythm to that shit. Yeah, and then they've been they've been in the game and been um in media in general since uh, the early 90s. So all the people that they've talked about or whatever, they have extensive like research on them people. So if they say something about Trump, they've seen Trump do so much that they could predict what happens if his ego gets to a point that he wants power. And they did it. And they've seen, they probably seen, they probably, I mean, they're old enough, so they probably seen the same thing happen over and over again politically that they could probably call it to a T to the point that people that haven't been up on po- politics so much, they think they're like gurus or something. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they they all Nostradamus. I'm like, mm-hmm. nah. They just... They just fun. They just funny and smart. And most you humans are stupid. So stupid, you're predictable. And that's how they're. So like, I don't know. It's it. That's one of those things, man. I I feel like every once in a while that someone is evolved with so much common sense above the rest of the generation, the curve out there, that they looked at like. He is the next coming of Christ or something from time to time. It was like, nah, nah, you just stupid and they smart. Hey, you just stupid. <laughs> you stupid, stupid, and they smart. That's it. <laughs> nah, I can see that. But that's a pretty solid damn list, man. Uh, Posh Squad, let us know what y'all think out there. What are y'all top three uh, TV shows of all time? Any genre? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. What do y'all think is the weirdest, like the just the off the most off the wall TV show of all time? Hmm. The weirdest, probably one of the Adult Swim, <laughs> one it's of the Adult Swim TV wall. shows. Um, commonly known or I don't remember the name of it, but the weirdest one that I used to watch uh, would be uh. I think it's called The Head or something like that. Like a big yeah, on MTV? Cartoon. Yeah, on MTV late at night to come on. Yeah. Right my head. Um, but yeah, that was probably the weirdest thing I could remember. Eon Flux was pretty weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty weird. Um, Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> yeah. Cat Dog. Uh, oh, man, it's another... Like it was like sketch comedy, but it was like weird sketches. It was like some type of video, some type of video. But it was like in the nineties. Um, not Mad TV, but um, it was like Ron. It was like it could be raunchy. It could be like really weird techno shit. Like it was like it's a really weird show. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, and kids in the hall. 
Oh yeah, that was weird. You ever seen that comedy show on uh, old school? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think they got um, shit back on Netflix. Kids in the Hall reunion type shit. Mm. I got. I got one because you know Nickelodeon prized themselves on weird sitcoms back in the day. Um, but Pete and Pete, remember that? I used to love oh, that's that. My shit. That was my show. That show, I I love that show too. But it was weird to me. Was, and Artie, the strongest man in the had a lot of <laughs> unusual premises. That nigga was a great value. Walt, where's Waldo? And he was the strongest man. I mean, the fact that they had a 14-year-old with a tattoo that danced. That shit was good. Yeah, right. They, they had, had another one, too. Um, something like that. They had this show about these teleporters called... Crime uh, Sliders. The Tomorrow People. Hmm. Yeah, it was like a spooky... That, it was I a spooky was show. Good. Alex Mack. Yeah, that was the next one I was gonna bring up. But it, it had yeah, that man, feel of good. Alex Man. That was a good damn show. Yeah, I watched Quantum like Leap. A small kid, like an adolescent kid. Mm-hmm. Good damn show. Like, yeah, like Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap. Love Quantum Leap. I probably was too young to be like really into it as much as I was. Because <laughs> like I think I got into it because I used to be watching that shit with my grandma. And you know what I'm saying? You kind of get it. Whatever she watched. So it used to come on after uh, Little House on the Prairie. And I used to be so happy Damn right. to get a, a switcheroo from Little House on the Prairie, as boring as that was. That quantum leap was like, it became like my shit. Like, like I, was, I probably did not need to like that show as much as I did, but I really liked that show. Like, and that nigga never actually left his ass back to his own time. Mm-mm, nope. Nah, cause no, nah, they ain't they ain't have enough money for the production to get, bring it back home. That's messed up. But nah. so what's 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 the weirdest show that you used to watch? That if anybody found out you watched it, they would look at you like, "Why did you watch that at that age?" Um, shit, mash, mash. Okay, <laughs> you yeah. taught me, man. I, don't, I can't even oh, think of one. Shit. That's my shit from a little kid to now. I fuck with my. Nah, <laughs> fuck with my ass, nigga. <laughs> the real sex on HBO. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and and weirdly, I wasn't watching it to get horny, and then I was literally just watching because I used to like to learn about all of these weird people and what the fuck they was doing. Okay, I, I like, tell y'all, I like, like to see titties. <laughs> I tell you, I, I, I like to watch the show Girlfriends. Girlfriends, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that's that my show. shit. It's a good show. My wife knows, like, to the fact that my wife knows, like, your show on. <laughs> oh man, that's my shit. What do you think draws you to that show so much? I have no idea at all. I have no idea at all, but I enjoy watching those folks motherfuckers getting this bullshit they get into. Well, all right. The Critic and Duck Man. Ooh, The Critic was my shit. That used to be my late night go to sleep show. Mm hmm. Duck Man is, is a great ass show. Oh, people man, I love that show. show. Yo, I love that show. that show. I did not get into that one as much. If you watch it as an older person now, like I used to watch it because it's just this crazy duck cartoon that I'm, I'm Daffy, Donald, you got me sold. DuckTales, hey, you can't go wrong okay. with a cartoon duck. We're going to show our age. We're going to show our age and our weirdness with this one. Y'all niggas ever watch The Mantis? Yes, The Mantis. Yeah, with the black dude. He had the, uh, yeah. the exoskeleton, but he was like handicapped. Like I vaguely X. remember that, but I can't. Like I can't pinpoint like a face of the character, but I, I've that premise. You know why? It, it sounds super familiar. You know why? You know why? Because <laughs> they they robbed us of a good show that, and that show was Mantis. 
They robbed us of that. I think the idea of the show was so ahead of its time that it wasn't enough for the budget or whatever. That oh dude God. was basically oh black God. Batman or whatever. He put on the they be walking around. He be well, um I can't say walking around. He riding around in his um in his fancy <laughs> His fancy <laughs> Professor X wheelchair and stuff, and then something happened. He pressed some buttons, and then this. I never understood. Like, next thing you know, he had this exoskeleton coming across his body, and then random flying car oh coming in. I was like, he was like this? Professor X, Knight Rider, and Iron Man. Yeah. That nigga All was Iron Man, Man, Batman, Professor All X. All in And he was a black man. And he was a black man. Yeah, that nigga, I, I, yo, I, he would. I, 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 I but, but, remember the show, but I cannot pinpoint. But it sounds uh different. Well, Google it, man. I, very far though, because uh, man, I don't think it made it past like maybe three, three episodes, yo. Because I remember the first episode okay. when it all happened, and I think it was like, if anything, it was like five episodes or whatever, yo. But that, okay. that guy, I, I that guy that. is is Meteor Man's Batman. That's basically what he is. Okay. I got another one. Where this where this show for a kid to just be watching fascinated with unsolved mysteries. Oh, that shit that's shit go creep me out. Uh, that shit go creep me out. For a kid? I fuck with unsolved mysteries. Um, it was a show back in the day. For a kid. At night. Uh, it was with Bruce Willis. I think it was Moon. You don't have to be. All right. Well, uh, like, yeah. these days, cold case files. Or mm. Mm. Yo, all right. Bruce right Willis. Bruce Willis had this show back in the 80s, right? Called Moonlighting. Yo. I used to watch that with my mom. Yo, I used to love that show. And I and I used to I always at a point in time, I used to miss it all the time because I think they changed the time or whatever. But I can remember, I can remember the um the ending of the show. That's the show that had me into detectives and stuff like that. I had a detective phase every time. Anything that had something to do with a detective, I was into it. Or oh, anything close to looking like goddamn detective, pretty much. Well, not. What was the? It was Moonlighter. It was another show, man. It's funny that because I don't even watch TV as much as I used to back then. Oh shit! So, also another good old man. Face brought up Mantis. Mantis. I'm about to yeah, look that man. up next. 